Namaturatana Tayasa. May I pay homage to Triple Gem, the Buddha, Dhamma, and the Sangha. My respect goes to my parents and my teachers. Hello, good evening. So today is Wednesday, the 15th of July 2020. This is Achan Sujan from Warapunya Meditation Center. Aberdeen, Scotland. So I'm here with you on this night again, as usual. As every night, I'm here to share some of my insights, some of my experiences, and also sharing some of the stories that I come across. And meanwhile, any uh, questions regarding a Buddhism and a Buddhist meditation, I will be responding in my capability. So hi everyone, hi Karina, Margaret, Colin, Manish and everyone. Those who are listening online this talk from locally Aberdeen, Scotland, in London, in UK and in Asia, even in New Zealand and um, in Switzerland, also in America. So thank you everyone for joining for this talk. So today's talk again we will continue from the previous talks since we are uh, focusing on the first discourse of the Buddha and the Dhamma Chakapavatana Sutra and uh, so far we have uh, covered or discussing on the first noble truth and we've been working on or uh, I'm talking on the second noble truth, the Samudaya, which is the cause of suffering. And there are so many aspects of uh, the Samudaya or the cause of a suffering, despite the cause of a suffering, this thirst or the craving uh, is the main root cause of all the problems, is not the main problem or is not the origin of all the troubles. Uh, but this is just where it starts and easy to note. So. Over this couple of nights, I have been talking on this topic and exploring how this relates to in our day-to-day -day life and how can we you know, use or apply these teachings and understand the problems that we have. Yeah. Now, yesterday I touched on the food story, right? and how food is uh, related for the other troubles to follow and uh, this food consumption again is never ending right and uh, i explained uh, i was telling the stories that related to the food uh, <clears throat> and actually i remember last night uh, one story i think <clears throat> some of you already know and that's uh, Colin's story yeah so when he was um, homeless and he came to meditation center and studied Buddhism and Buddhist meditation and gradually he was he gained uh, confidence and then later he got the job and he got the job he went to the shop uh, sorry the workshops and then his experience was that uh, as you eat mindfully, was able to, you know, even uh, losing your weight. So you basically you don't have to eat too much, but eating just a bit, but mindfully can make you feel stomach full, right? So at that time, Colin was quite, you know, losing his weight, but uh, you know, uh, was fit and healthy. I hope he can continue this. I, I, I believe that he is listening too. <laughs> so anyway, so thank you everyone for listening again. Okay, these uh, my reflections and uh, my thoughts on the food yesterday. Actually, there are <clears throat> four different types of a food that Buddha spoke that is that are the, the, the cause of other troubles to come. 
Uh, and that's yesterday I talked only two and mostly spoke on the ordinary uh, food that's the any material food that we consume or physical nutrients that we need and whereas the Buddha spoke further on about the contact as the nutri nutrition or nutriment so known as pasaharo yeah? and then there is a third type of a food that we consume and which is normally we uh, consume a lot and on the basis of that we again perform so many other uh, uh, activities and also taking that uh, everything is like a permanent okay uh, <clears throat> so that is called mano sanchetanahar that is mental volition as a nutrition nutriment and the last one is a consciousness as a nutriment which is linking the birth or which is feeding us to reborn again that is known as vinyanahara yeah. so these four are the nutriments that nutrition that uh, are basically on the base of this uh, a desire yeah. and in a buddhism there is a specific practice of a meditation is given on these four uh, foods okay that is known as ahare patikula sanya this comes under the uh, samatha meditation right so it's concentration meditation and in this samatha meditation or this concentration meditation it speaks very detailed each of these four nutrients or the food and how this links, yeah? how this links, and how, why these become a trouble. And now, after I have told you that these four nutrients, which is the cause to arise this tanha, the thirst or the craving, now you can link in your day-to-day -day life. Let's say a food, the ordinary food, which uh, we need to you know, keep our physical body. Uh, uh, healthy and that we as I mentioned yesterday and you know, we never satisfied with that and the second is this Vedana it's a means the contact as a nutriment and here the contact basically <clears throat> five senses comes to contact with the other objects and at that moment what happens is Although that is suffering, yeah, but we take it as happiness. Do you know why this is? Let's say I or you know there are like let's say junk food. Yeah, or we know that this is not good, but yet we go on and take it in, right? So that's also. And you can we can relate to it sometimes and I think men I mentioned about the negative news that we are so attached to we know that is harmful and yet we sort of attached to it and and I also mentioned about uh, how the advertisement companies manipulating us simply presenting a half story as a truth you know and I, I think one of the nights I told uh, that if you are writing a, 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 if you are writing an academic paper and if you refer the scientists or the researchers have found that and so it's simply supporting your argument without quoting or without referring any person a scientist or any paper if you write an article and say researchers have found or research found or scientists said or study have found there is a tend to believe more probably over 90 percent we believe in that what is saying and that's simply because of the consuming it right and with that we take it as an existence we take it as you know we want to be exist uh, we want we make it we take it as the truth like that 
Uh, and this is you, you know we can relate in our day to day life. And the, the third, the manosanchetana, or the volution as a you know mental volution as the nutriment again, the, it it gives this uh, pervasive, uh, pervasive understanding or pervasive knowledge of things that is not permanent as a permanent. Uh, so we hold on to that view that 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 is true, and that's why we have so many different types of views and different people hold on to their views and their understanding, their experiences as the truth, and they hold on to it. Like a few nights ago, uh, I was leading, uh, and I, we were we went for a walk uh, in the, the hills, which is nearby. And when we were coming back, we were talking about uh, the uh, the educated persons or those who are highly educated. <clears throat> In that, there were two discussion going on. One one person was saying that those who are study a lot, normally they forgot. Uh, they they forgot the basics, and look down on someone who doesn't uh, have much knowledge. And whereas another argument was that there are people who doesn't know much, but they pretend that they know simply based on what they have read or they, what they have experienced, um, and claiming and so confidently that that is true. Whereas there are some, well, there are many, in fact, that one those who have studied and researched and understood uh, the subject in particular, they are good at it they would humbly say, ah, I'm not sure, but I think this may be like that. So in this way, humbly responding to the questions and answers. So that's why this is, again, each one of us has got this personality view or holding on to the view that that is the right. So this is, again, we need to be very careful. And the uh, Buddha has always in encouraged us to make us ourselves humble that the things that we know is only a handful knowledge that we know. Even the Buddha, and I think one of the nights I mentioned that he put, you know, took the leaves in his hands, you know, and then told the monks that, uh, "What do you think between the leaves in his hand and the leaves in the forest? Uh, which one is the more?" The monk said that in the forest, obviously, more. Uh, leaves than in your hand, Master, the Lord. <clears throat> then the Buddha said that like that, I have known this much uh, of the leaves in the forest, but I taught you only this handful of leaves, which is beneficial for you, which is beneficial for you to be free from this bond of a cycle of a birth and a death. And this is the teachings this is the path to overcome the the the, the uh, this cycle of a birth and a death. And now imagine, we are talking and we are investigating and trying to make uh, try to understand this handful of teachings, a handful of teachings that Buddha taught us. And for myself, I am reading so many books, you know, and even the discourses, but I haven't finished reading it. And every time when I listen uh, the teachers, uh, other monks' talks and other uh, teachers' talks, it always fascinates me. It always makes me feel like, oh, there are so many other things. I know a little bit. It's like a surface of the water. I need to dive into the deeper and deeper. So there is a thirst in me, always wanting to learn more and more. And that's sort of the view. But what here is the Manosanchetana is basically is holding on to view that we have is the great and the end. So we always need to think that this is not the end. We are there are so many things to know and there are so many people who are well qualified, well understood and and they are so good at it. So once we have that, then this Manosanchetana or the mental 
<coughs> volitional uh, nutriment will help us to you know decrease that so when we are understood it but when we do not understand that and then we just feed on and this ego generates selfish begins right self 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 selfish and nature uh, develops and whereas the the last one the there and again this is i'm just trying to make sense and you know, give you the this um, um, understanding of these uh, each topics in our day to day life that how it involves and how it uh, makes uh, us into that state of uh, holding on to that views and the simply thus this thirst the tanha the, the craving or holding on to that and mentally we are holding on to it and that's become the the taints or the uh, a view that's become a strong that's why we have so-called fundamentalists or fanatists uh, and like that these are simply because mentally holding the fact they know is the truth and the rest are not yeah. so remember and now on that i just got this uh, memory comes back uh, so there was a uh, one time we had a discussion after the meditation which we normally had in the past after the meditation we do the discussions one of the discussions one of the members mentioned that uh, and I see is a historian and I see mentioned uh, that uh, when you are reading a history from the one side who's written that will always prefer to read in that way but if you dig into the history what you find that even the history is manipulated so each countries have manipulated their history in favor of their okay in favor of them but when you study that deeper into that then you realize that there are two sides of a coins so all the histories that we read that we study always it has got the two sides that's why it depends on who writes the history and it's up to us how to find the truth so we have to read or we have to investigate in that and with this we if we have this open mind which buddha always encouraged us to have this and encourage us to be you know investigative and uh, able to investigate before take it into the truth um, so we will not be you know, carried away with this view of this uh, this flood of this uh, view a so-called distorted view yeah? distorted view and with that what happens is um, there is a saying sanyu paga vinya natiti which means perception as a steading point for consciousness passing on and a bhaya agati gamanam going a bad way through fear yeah so fear will generate if they are doing this then that's wrong that leads to the the, the fear or, or even the sorrow and even the you know lamentation so that is the mentally developing these views and i think and this is a part of like a, you know you can relate to the scripture phoenix you know they are just thinking and thinking in their minds and proliferating and making it as a truth and a hallucination things you now also taking as a truth too so these are simply you know we need to be mindful of that the holding on to the views that we think that's the truth uh, and keeping into our minds so this is also a part of this tanha the craving the thirst uh, and this is in a part of this uh, ahare particular it means uh, the food and nutriments right? the vinyana side <clears throat> and this vinyana side is basically is about the uh, consciousness and here in consciousness as a nutriment is like we take the consciousness as the um, non-changing or uh, eternity eternal 
and it's always going into uh, uh, in a circle going into uh, reborn again and again and continuously going but again uh, with this thought of a continuous going on what happens is that we cling on to the theory of this self yeah? or self theory clinging uh, my existence I exist uh, I am not gonna die I will be here forever you know like that that sort of a yeah uh, uh, this thirst begins and we hold on to that and uh, we are bond you know we bond as the clinging so this bond of this ignorance of holding on to the self as a permanent you know, that creates more yeah, a problem and this has become the avijja so called uh, um, ignorance say, as the taints or the, uh, that it's, um, taints our uh, minds and unable to purify ourselves yeah, and um, there is a lot, uh, one saying uh, that going a bad way through delusion. So we have a deluded mind. And with that deluded mind, what happens is when we make uh, decisions, that won't be the, uh, the same decision. You know, it is always bringing the troubles. Yeah? And it's always bringing the trouble. And that brings so-called um, uh, not able to attain what we want uh, because we have a the identity view of this this uh, consciousness that this is a permanent it's unchangeable yeah and this is going to be permanent in when we have this anatta as a atta so anatta means the non self as atta means the self existence then that moment We cannot get it. We have to die. Unfortunately, we have to leave this consciousness. And consciousness is, again, combination of others. It is not an entity or de-entity. It's a combination or uh, it's like electricity, I, I would say. It's like electricity. Electricity is created uh, after the water and the current hits. Okay, a current hits and this spines and with that, the, uh, the electricity appears. And again, with that electricity, if you take away the power, let's say the, uh, the water or the damp, a uh, dam, dam, then, and you do not supply through the narrow channel, and it's not hit to the uh, turbine, then it won't generate the electricity. So where is the electricity? So electricity is, or the the light, uh, the bulb light is like uh, the vinyana, is the consciousness, is conditioned, aroused, and when the condition dissembled, the light is no more there, and this conscious, this light, although we see it's so bright and continuous, uh, continue brighting non-stop. Actually, it's a current going on so fast that it's very difficult to see it but the current continuously moving around as a result we have to pay a bill as a result the meter goes up and this month we are using so much uh, uh, working in the barn and the meter has gone up and up and up and up so it's uh, 15th uh, now it's 15th of a month, uh, month this month our electricity already over 50 now yeah? So that's why it is, because this is always constantly moving. The more this is moving, so it's run out. So electricity is running out. And this we can see in Nepal a lot, as an example. We have a lot of load shading in the past. Maybe 13, 14 hours of a load shading, no electricity at all. And that's simpler because the level of water is not good and uh, not enough during the summer to supply or to create to, to generate the electricity uh, and with that that we have uh, uh, less electricity and as a result 
it needed to distribute in a, a different location in different times so everybody can have electricity for some times why it is because it's conditioned created and that consciousness our consciousness is also also like that it is conditioned created the very moment when you can take the condition away there is no consciousness yeah? so that's the reason why we cannot claim this consciousness is a permanent and that's called anatta attati yeah so one will perceive this non-existence of this consciousness as existence and with that view we crave more with we have a thirst to continuation we want to be longer and longer and which brings this lamentation and a sadness that we cannot continue going on in that way okay. and here again it's it is the consciousness is like an atom too atom is in a in a way it exists but in ultimate sense atom doesn't exist one atom is made of different other electron proton fraton like that so these three at least there are four i think these four uh, elements are spinning in within and with that these spinning all the three comes to together and all three are working together that moment one atom begins and this one atom added to the other atoms and that's how one objects develops and in buddhism it's called attakalapa there are eight things to come together in order to develop one atom yeah so that simply shows that even a one atom has to uh, uh, has has to have different other conditions to arise, and the very moment when you take away the dismantle those uh, conditions, then there is no atom. So that's why it's called there is and there isn't. Okay? So it's a physic way say there is but there isn't. Okay, and that's the topic. And the Buddha uh, said that. Our life doesn't exist, but it exists, right? So in a, it is exist in a way, in a conventional way, we see it. But in an ultimate sense, it doesn't exist. So does the uh, consciousness too. So consciousness also doesn't, it, is, it exists, but it doesn't. And that's again, combination of the, or conditioned with other things arose. Yeah. Thank you, Colin. Yeah, that's a neutron, ne neutron. Uh, combination of that creates the atom so I am not going further on with this food system, uh, food topic or nutriment that is the cause uh, or that is the reason why we have a craving to uh, use it in a day-to-day -day, uh, craving or thirst continuously and these are four nutriments that I mentioned you know, if we look at it these are the main root cause of uh, other troubles that we are facing and that's why you know, we have to understand that uh, whenever we are consuming whether it is food that we consume whether we are you know, comes to contact with our senses and other objects whether a sound whether a sight smell you know, our uh, test or the contact or even our thinking that how much we are attached to our own views or the proliferations things uh, or you know, uh, consciously aware that not taking of this uh, non-self as the self and these these are if you you know look at and reflect in our day to day in your day to day life you can you know, so beautifully link to your own daily life and you can link that these are the main root cause of other troubles because of a food that you need you go to work and because of you're going to work there are so many others for uh, troubles to follow and because we have these senses that comes to contact with it and not knowing of that we develop these views and these rites, uh, rites and rituals and things and so on all what we need is to be mindful of that knowing of that and this is one of the teachings of the, with the meditation practice known as Ahare Patikula Sanya. When we know that, we are done.
So this is one of this, the cause of all other troubles. I end here and thank you everyone for listening and we'll come back with the other topics within this thirst or this second noble truth to explore and uh, in a few minutes time few moments time it's already over one now a few moments time we will have um, uh, uh, evening chanting and guided meditation you're most welcome to join with us and thank you everyone for your support